I've been able to tell people that they should quit porn, but that they shouldn't worry about masturbation. And understandably, this raises some eyebrows. After all, there are basically two main sources of information for this whole anti-porn thing that you can find online. One of them is NoFap, which in the name already tells you they're not very fond of fapping. And the other is religion. So a good portion of creators who talk about quitting porn are also religious. And there's this kind of religious moral component, which is usually also you shouldn't masturbate. You shouldn't have sex before marriage and this kind of stuff. So the fact that I tell people, hey, porn is the real problem, quit porn, and if you keep masturbating, I don't really care. Like I said, it raises some eyebrows, it gets people skeptical, and it gets people to ask a lot of questions. So today, let me explain in depth. I have touched on this in, in my content, but let, let's go in depth into this. I want to give you the full download of my sources and my thinking on this. Ultimately, what I care about is your success if your goal is to heal your brain from porn use. And what I see here, and the reason I make a different recommendation than what's typical, is because I see a lot of people letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. Which is to say, you can go to like a nofap forum and people will be debating you know, the benefits of semen retention, and they'll be having a meltdown because they had a wet dream or something like that. Whereas most of the people having this discussion haven't actually healed from their porn addiction yet, right? They're still in a cycle of trying to quit relapsing, trying to quit relapsing, and so on. And this is, well, it's a little bit like this. It's a little bit like if you have people discussing, you know, some detail of optimal fitness, like, oh, you're creatine supplementation. Is it better to take six grams once a day? Or is it better to take two grams in the morning, two grams at lunch and two grams in the evening? And should you take it like right after your workout or right before your workout? Listen, you're not even lifting regularly, right? You're not even going to the gym. You're not even following a structured exercise program. It doesn't matter how you take your creatine. And having this discussion is a complete waste of time until you get to a really elite level. Like you have to get the basics in. If you are lifting regularly, if you have gone through a progression long enough that you've started to hit plateaus, if you start to get into like elite level fitness and lifting, then maybe, maybe your creatine timing makes a difference. But before you get there, even talking about it is basically pointless. And this is how I see a lot of this, you know, there can be big debates about the harms of masturbation or, or yeah, you have to retain your semen, and the spiritual transformation of blah, blah. But dude, you haven't even quit porn for more than a week, right? It doesn't matter yet. If you are not solidly porn free, then all of these details don't matter. So that, that's the first point I want to kind of suggest here to consider, like consider this perspective when you see people having discussions about this. Ultimately, I am not here to tell you that you should masturbate or that you shouldn't masturbate or even do the semen retention stuff, whatever, right? Ultimately, it's up to you to choose whatever you want to do. What I want to do is arm you with knowledge. So I'll go into the details of the differences between the harms of porn, the potential harms of masturbation, why I recommend separating those two and the exact way that I recommend you use this knowledge in order to become porn free and heal your brain. This is just information, knowledge is power. You can then take this information and make whatever decision you want with it. So to get started, my basic thesis is that porn is highly harmful and masturbation is either not harmful at all or if harmful, then a lot less. In a future video, I'll go deep into the science of all this. But for now, a very simple way to think about it, to see why I've come to this conclusion is this. Think about the differences between pre-porn and post-porn. So in a world where porn didn't exist yet, especially, you know, porn in everyone's pocket, we've only had high-speed internet and a device in everyone's pocket for the last like 12-ish years. So before that, porn already existed. If we go back a little further, right, 20, 30 years, at that point, obviously porn already existed. There were magazines and stuff, but it was way inaccessible compared to now. So if you think about that pre-porn world, which is like 30 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, right? <laughs> Masturbation has existed ever since we've had opposable thumbs, but porn is a relatively recent phenomenon. Before high-speed porn in everyone's pocket, there were already guys who had a masturbation problem, like people who would excessively masturbate and maybe suffer some problems from that, and people who had a sex addiction of some kind. It already existed, but it was much, much rarer than today. There are loads of problems we see that porn users have now that have only emerged in the last few years. So only in this last 10 years or so, where like I said, everybody has potential porn in their pocket at all times. 
this is where we see like these crazy negative outcomes. But one of the clearest signs is that there is a huge rise in erectile dysfunction. So basically guys, young guys who have boner problems, young guys who cannot get hard or stay hard when they have sex with a real person. And why is that? Well, because they've trained for years and years to get aroused by watching other people have sex on a screen. So then when they try to have sex with a real person in real life, it doesn't work. This is clearly a bad sign that this, this didn't exist before porn, all right? So even the guys who were masturbating a lot, they had no problem having sex with a real woman. And then we also have loads of mental health issues and we have social isolation and we have people in general having less sex than ever. And all of these things have only happened since the widespread access to free porn by virtually everyone. So that is the, the very simple basis for my thesis that, look, the problem is not masturbation. The problem is high-speed porn in everyone's pocket. So next, let's look at what makes porn harmful in the first place. What exactly is it about porn that is causing the problems I mentioned? And by the way, loads more problems that we'll get to in the future. Again, for the sake of saving time, let me simplify this as much as possible. Porn is basically the sugar glazed deep fried donut problem. So a sugar glazed deep fried donut is a hyper stimulating food. It is basically fattier and sweeter and in some ways more satisfying than any natural food. And it hijacks that part of your brain that is, that is wired for survival because it sends such a strong signal of like sweetness and fattiness and calories. There's a part of you that is basically programmed to try and get as much of that as possible because in the natural world, like before industrialized food, finding a food source like this would have been so rare that it's a good program, right? For, for your survival, it's a good program to say, hey, if you experience something like this, something as sweet as this, just eat as much of it as possible because it could be months before you get something like this again. So now we have this artificial manufactured food that is hyper stimulating and hijacks that part of our brain. And this is why sugary foods and junk food in general is highly addictive and people tend to eat too much of it. People tend to lose control around it. Porn is that for sex. So again, in the natural world, the way we evolved, access to sex was relatively scarce. And there's a part of you that is wired to survive and procreate that basically says, especially if you're a man, that part of you basically says, hey, any chance you get to have sex, you take it. For women, this is a bit different, right? Because they have consequences to deal with when they have sex and get pregnant. But for men, it's like, hey, any time you can get it, go for it. And keep in mind, I'm talking about like subconscious kind of animal brain parts of you. I'm not saying that every man is consciously all the time going around trying to screw everything that moves, but there's a part of you, there's a part of your biology that's essentially wired that way. And porn is a hyper stimulant. It is just like the sugar glazed donut. It is like a manufactured thing that tricks that part of your brain, gives it a higher stimulus than it was ever really designed to receive and makes you want more and more and more. But okay, that doesn't explain the harm yet, does it? Because with a sugar glazed donut example, of course, if you eat those all the time, you suffer health consequences. But what about porn? I mean, it's not like you gain weight or get a heart attack or something because you're jacking into porn too much. So where does the harm come from? Well, the harm comes basically from your body's response to that overstimulation. So what happens is that you have this spike, you essentially have a spike of dopamine when you get this hyper-stimulating reward, which is what you get from watching porn. And your body tries to compensate, your body tries to find balance. And because the stimulus is so strong and so fast, your body essentially overcompensates. And what you experience is what we call a crash below baseline. So your baseline would be like your normal levels of dopamine. And this is like just your normal level of, you know, motivation, satisfaction, et cetera. And then every once in a while you have something that ramps up your dopamine. And usually that happens relatively slowly. And it's basically you're, you're motivated to go do something. You go do it, you finish it, it's rewarding and you feel good. And then that's kind of a peak of dopamine and then slowly it flattens out again. But with something like porn, you don't have to put in any work to get that dopamine. It's like you just pull out your phone or you go to your device you pull up the tube site and there it is, there is the hyper stimulating reward, creates this super fast spike. And then the crash below baseline basically means that afterwards you feel worse than before. This is by the way, why you usually feel worse after finishing than, than you did before, right? You, you really want it. And then you have this spike of pleasure, this spike of stimulation, but afterwards you feel bad. And then the problem is when you feel bad, you want more of the thing that made you feel good, even if it was just for a short time. So then you seek out more of the stimulant, but because you are now below baseline, you need more stimulation to get a similar level of pleasure as before. 
and this leads to escalation. This is why you end up watching more and more extreme stuff and why porn users basically almost always experience some kind of escalation, which is that you go into more and more extreme fetishes or your sessions become longer or you start using toys or whatever. You have to add more stuff, right? You escalate the way you use porn and what you watch and how you do it over time because you need a stronger and stronger impulse in order to get the same level of pleasure and because you're giving yourself a stronger impulse, you will crash even further below baseline. The end result, the net result of this is that over time, you will feel generally miserable. So through this overstimulation of your dopamine system, you go from you know, generally feeling fine to generally feeling really bad. And as you can tell, this is a vicious cycle because when you feel bad, you want more porn and so on. So this is the basic brain chemistry of what makes porn actually harmful. And this is not the only harm it does, but I think this is the thing to understand. And this is, by the way, true of all addictions, right? Porn is just one hyper-stimulating addictive thing that can cause this problem in your life. So let's leave it at that. Like I said, I don't want to go too deep here. I don't want this to be too long. Let's leave it at that. This is our model for here's why porn is actually harmful. So now we can ask ourselves, okay, does this apply to masturbation as well? Does masturbation have the same problem? And the answer is, well, kind of. I mean, what it certainly has in common with watching porn is that it is a quick reward, right? You don't have to like go out and do something. You don't have to earn the reward really. You can essentially drop your pants and get a reward fairly quickly. So it's also this shortcut and it's also perhaps a bit of an overstimulation. But if it is harmful, in a similar way to porn, then it is the same, but like 10x less strong, right? It's a much lower dose of the same thing. And that's because you have taken away a lot of the stimulation. Like think about how much of a stimulation it is if you're sitting there watching some kind of a rapid cut fetish porn compilation, right? That is like blasting this kind of stimulation into your eyeballs. Another way in which it is overstimulating is that you might be seeing dozens of different women in the span of just a few minutes. This stimulation is removed when you masturbate. And at least a little bit of effort is involved because if you're going to fantasize while masturbating, well, then at least there's a creative process involved. Like you have to think of things, right? And your fantasy is never going to be as stimulating as visual and auditory porn. So in terms of your dopamine system, in terms of your brain health, masturbation isn't like the best thing you can do for yourself. And that's why I say that, you know, maybe it is harmful in some similar ways to porn, but it's like 10x milder compared to porn. And we can also see that clearly when we compare pre-porn masturbation to post-porn masturbation. So before porn existed, yes, there were already guys who masturbated too much who kind of got addicted to it a little bit. But in general, what didn't happen is this kind of thing where, where guys can spend, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, several hours a day, like edging to porn. This, this didn't happen before porn. So while you can also overdo masturbation without porn and you can do it to a degree that's not healthy because it's just so much less stimulating and so much less addictive, it happens much more rarely. And in fact, what generally used to happen is that addicts would also rely on some kind of an external stimulus. So, you know, going to strip clubs or soliciting prostitutes where you also have this, this fake external stimulation. And I'm calling it fake because like the stripper pretends to like you, the prostitute pretends to want to have sex with you, but that's not true. And so without this kind of fake external stimulus, it just generally doesn't tend to be a problem. Now, one thing I also want to mention at this point is the health question, because this is also something that's sometimes debated. Well, is masturbation actually healthier than not masturbating? Because, you know, it's good for your prostate health. Basically, if you don't ejaculate at least like once a week or once every other week or something like that, isn't that bad for your prostate health? You know, you've got to clean the pipes every once in a while, basically. Now, what I can say about this is I found this review here where they looked at many studies to see if there is a correlation between masturbation frequency and prostate cancer. And it's inconclusive, right? It's like some studies say, yes, there is a positive benefit. Some studies say no. Bottom line, we're not sure. And I think one of the confounding factors here is that even if you don't masturbate, there is a natural process. You'll have a wet dream, right? You will basically ejaculate while you sleep, which seems to be like the body's natural way of, of doing this kind of house cleaning that's needed. And that's maybe why there isn't much of a difference or why it's hard to find a difference or a health benefit here in studies. But as far as I can tell, at least from the scientific evidence side, there doesn't seem to be any evidence that suggests that masturbation is unhealthy or that ejaculating 
with some frequency is unhealthy or is bad for you. Now, there is an unfortunate truth here that we also need to talk about, which is that porn users tend to carry over bad habits from their porn use into masturbation, even if they quit porn. Think about what a healthy baseline would look like. Again, in a pre-porn world, an average guy, what would this look like? If he's single, he currently doesn't have a partner to have sex with. Well, he probably gets horny every once in a while and masturbates. And what does that look like? It's maybe two or three times a week, and it takes like 10 minutes each. And again, I think, you know, we can split hairs about, oh, is this good or is this bad? But if you show me a guy who masturbates two to three times a week for 10 minutes each because he's horny every once in a while, and that's it, and he doesn't watch porn, he doesn't do any weird stuff that porn addicts do, to me, that person does not have a problem. That person isn't in dire need of, of help or lifestyle change, all right? But of course, if you take someone who's been addicted to porn for years or maybe even decades, and then they quit porn, but they keep masturbating, well, chances are you have some bad masturbation habits. Namely, you're probably doing it too often because most porn users use daily. And so you'll probably keep the habit of masturbating every day, which might be more than is healthy. But also, and more importantly, you have trained your brain through the escalation effect that we talked about before, through the desensitization, right? You've trained your brain to get off on more and more extreme stuff. And you might find that you have to imagine this kind of extreme stuff in order to be able to get off. So when you masturbate without porn, you essentially have to make the porn in your head or replace the porn you're not seeing on a screen by fantasizing about this kind of extreme hardcore fetish stuff. And otherwise you just can't get off. If that's the case, then yes, masturbation too is pretty unhealthy because you're basically holding on to it. Essentially, you've done some damage to your brain and you've desensitized yourself to just like a normal erotic things through the use of porn. And now by fantasizing and masturbating all the time, you're holding on to those bad habits, right? You're holding on to the bad habits that you created through porn use. So that's real. And if you don't change that, then you haven't fully healed from this. And I fully acknowledge that. But... Also, let me just say, doing this is still much better than watching porn, all right? So if you have someone who manages to quit porn and then keeps masturbating quite a lot and fantasizing about porn stuff, that is still good. It is still better than watching porn every day. And if you have to do that for a while in order to establish the habit of not watching porn, then that's a win. And you can take care of developing a healthier relationship with sex and masturbation later. Now, there's one final point I wanted to mention. This is something I noticed from working with people who have porn addiction, from the people in my Discord community, from people in the comments and so on. Porn users, especially people who started watching porn from a very young age, cannot distinguish between porn, masturbation, and sex. Because many of you discovered porn and masturbation more or less together at the same time, or maybe exactly at the same time. Many of you have only ever masturbated to porn, and also many of you have not had real sex or haven't had real sex in a long time. In your mind, these things have completely merged. Part of you, like part of your brain thinks that you're having sex when you're masturbating to porn. And it maybe never even occurred to you that you could masturbate without porn because you've always done these things together. This is one of the harmful effects of porn. It merges these three th separate things in your mind. And this also means that many of you are feeling ashamed and guilty and so on when you masturbate to porn and you carry those feelings of shame and guilt over into all sexual activities. This is not particularly healthy and it's not great for living a happy life. So that's one more way in which porn is harmful and it is actually valuable to unfuse these things in your mind and learn that you can experience sexual pleasure apart from porn, right? Without porn. In fact, that's something you have to learn if you want to fully heal. So, okay, this brings me to the practical part. You now know how I think about porn and masturbation and why they're separate. And here's what I recommend you do. I recommend, first of all, that you prioritize quitting porn because that is the source of the problems. That is the true harmful thing. And I recommend that you set the goal of being at least 90 days completely porn free, 90 consecutive days porn free, and during that time, basically masturbate as much as you need to in order to stay porn free. And after 90 days, you can assess what you want to do about your masturbation habit. Now, a lot of people who've seen a lot of nofap content and so on are reluctant to do this. So here's my other advice I have. Count your porn free days separately from your masturbation free days. If you want to quit both of these things, 
count two separate things. How many days have you been porn free and how many days have you been masturbation free? And if you're going to relapse, relapse on masturbation, but not on porn. And this is why this advice is super important. This is where people really shoot themselves in the foot because here's what happens with no fappers, right? You quit porn and masturbation at the same time. And then usually after like four or five days, you can't stand it anymore and you relapse and you go on a full binge because, hey, you failed anyway, right? You couldn't take it anymore. And so you go back to masturbating and you go back to porn. And because you failed anyway, you go back to a super hardcore, you know, long session porn binge. This is basically like someone who's on a diet and they're trying to lose weight, but they're too strict with their diet. And, you know, when they have a day where they don't exactly hit their calorie goal, they're like, oh, I failed anyway, so I might as well, you know, slurp down these two tubs of ice cream. So when you fail, you just go full binge. And of course, this is not helpful. Like if you're trying to lose weight and you miss your calorie target by a little bit, that's fine. Try again tomorrow. Don't make it worse by going on a full binge. But this is exactly what people do when they relapse on NoFap. So that's what I mean when I say prioritize being porn free for at least 90 days. And for many guys, you'll find that it's just much easier to get to a long period of being porn free if you can relapse on masturbation every once in a while, or even often if that's necessary to deal with the urges. Now, if you do this and you reach 90 days of being porn free, at that point, you can assess your masturbation habit and you can ask yourself, do I have a problem here? And if you're still masturbating a lot and you're fantasizing about porn stuff in your head and so on, then yes, now might be a good point to also go masturbation free for a while. But importantly, you want to be comfortably porn free first. You want to have a solidly established habit of not watching porn before you try to go masturbation free. Again, do not allow yourself to relapse all the way back to a porn binge. And my recommendation would be that once you feel like you're solidly porn free, that you go 30 days masturbation free to see what that feels like and to see if there's, you know, further kind of changes, further, maybe new urges, maybe new things come up. There's maybe a further healing process. And basically, look, if at this point you don't have a problem with masturbation, if you're not addicted to it or anything, then going 30 days without it shouldn't be a problem. And if it is a problem, then you, you needed it, right? So that's my simple recommendation. But here's the thing, this quit by healing, the stuff I talk about is about more than just removing porn from your life and leaving everything else as it is. It's very unlikely that you get to the point where you're 90 days porn free and nothing else has changed, especially if you follow the quit by healing approach. Going from zero to 90 days porn free, you will probably experience various things. Like you'll experience maybe strong spikes of like urges and your libido, right? Where you just can't stand it. But you'll probably also experience a flat line at some point where you kind of just lose your libido completely and you lose interest in anything sexual for a while. And then maybe it comes back and you might have several waves like that and so on. So it's pretty unlikely that after 90 days, you still have the same habits you had on day one. And that's especially true if you do the other quit by healing stuff, right? A big part of what we do is one is like the self therapy of learning how to gain deeper awareness and doing things like introspective writing and meditation, like confronting your demons. And it's also things like cultivating self-acceptance and healing your self-image issues. And it is inserting good positive dopamine replacement habits in your life and doing things like exercising and doing things out in the real world and learning new skills and doing challenging things. And if you do all this for 90 days, there's no way that you still have the same bad habits you had on day one. What's much more likely is that after 90 days, you say, actually, I only focused on quitting porn and doing the other stuff in the quit by healing process. And at this point, I've actually completely lost interest in both porn and masturbation because I got this hot girlfriend in the meantime. Doing this stuff will completely transform your life. And yes, of course, if all you do is try not to look at porn and not to touch your dick for however long you can, not that much is going to change in your life, but that will be a massive waste of an opportunity. So that's not what we do here at Quit by Healing. All right. So that is my extensive download on masturbation versus porn and why I make the recommendations I do. Now, I hope this clarifies many of the questions that have been going around. But of course, if you have other questions, if there's anything else you want to know about this, then you can leave a comment. You can leave a comment under the YouTube video. You can join my Discord and ask questions there or you can go to anchor.fm forward slash QBH for quit by healing 
and you can click the message button there and leave me a voice message. I'd love to hear from you and I'm happy to answer any other questions you have. Ultimately, like I said, you make your own decisions. I'm trying to arm you with the knowledge to help you quit porn, become a better version of yourself and ultimately live a better life.